in the middle of the ocean. No land for thousands of miles. Heavy seas breaking over the top of the boat. Will my repairs hold up? There's only one way to find out. Let's break some stuff. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learn restoring a hurricane damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. So before I did any major structural repairs on the boat, I wanted to make sure that both the materials I was using down to the specific brands were just as strong as the original boat. So what I did is I cut a section out of the boat to use as a control. And then I cut several other pieces out and ground them away to do repairs on them. And then lastly, I took one of my new pieces of foam and built a complete new construction using the techniques that I was going to try on the boat. In the end, I made up quite a few different samples using polyester resin, vinyl ester resin, and epoxy, trying the different techniques. I even had to do a second set of tests because some of the first set, set was inconclusive. Had some pretty interesting results as we're going to see here as we start the tests. I got a TIG welder to start practicing welding for all the stainless work I'm going to do. And so, uh, but I'm welding mild steel now. And so with the scrap pieces, I thought what a perfect time to build this test stand. This is the little test stand I can use to test my composite pieces. So just don't look too closely at the wells, welds. I tell, will tell you, I've got a lot better from, from even just starting the, the start welds on this to the end welds. It's kind of coming back to me how to TIG weld. But uh, yeah, some of them are not so good. Some of them are okay though. Uh, but I think I'll get it probably another 10 hours of practice on the welder and I think I'll be comfortable enough to, to weld my stainless uh, but like everything else uh, when I weld the stainless I'm gonna weld it and break it to make sure it's strong enough so I've made all these samples uh, these are showing some of the different repairs unrepaired a repair of vinyl ester repair with epoxy and then complete repair then then what we're gonna do is we're gonna break them but I don't want to just pull them apart right and say oh that one was stronger than the other one we got to do this empirically so I have my load cell and that's set up here all right guys now it's time to take your guesses how much weight do you think this one inch wide strip of laminate will hold so here we are testing the original boat and this is going to be the number that I want to match and exceed but I don't want to exceed it too far. And it's okay to, to actually build it stronger, but you don't actually want to build it stiffer. That will cause you a problem. And we'll talk about that later with hard points. And so here's what we get from the original boat. 372 pounds and 376 pounds. I ran the, the test twice. And here you can see exactly where the, the damage occurred. It delaminated off the back and then cracked the core. This next one here is the vinyl ester repair. And this is how a lot of the boat will be with the original layer on the underneath and just the vinyl ester patched on the top. And the reason that I patched it, it's patched halfway through uh, this test connection so that we can make sure that we're not just testing the strength of the vinyl ester, we're testing the strength of the vinyl ester binding to the existing fiberglass. And here you can see the totals on that. 571 pounds and 427 pounds. It's a little hard to tell in this one, but what gave way basically is the core. The core sheared at this point. And so the laminate, uh, both the outside and the inside, are plenty strong. They're stronger than the core at this point. Okay, so now this next test, this is what caused the whole thing to be inconclusive and why I had to do a second test. So this was some epoxy, some general purpose epoxy that I used. And when it went down, uh, I only got about 300 and something pounds out of it, which was a little weird because it was epoxy. And it buckled in a really weird way that, um, under compression, and I couldn't figure it out. Uh, when I went back and looked at some of the other uh, epoxy that I mixed in the same batch, it turned out that this epoxy didn't even harden all the way. And so I'm not sure if I made an error in mixing it or contaminating it. So I tried another test with some different epoxy, a different brand, thinking it was a problem with the epoxy, but it turns out it, it's just the way that I had mixed it up. I'm not sure what happened on that or if I contaminated it, but it didn't harden. All 
All right, here we go with the high strength epoxy test. And it's really interesting. The uh, general purpose epoxy was the easiest to laminate. It wet out the fabric the best. It was very lightweight. Uh, the, the high strength epoxy was much more like the vinyl ester. Very thick, very heavy, very difficult to wet out the cloth. Um, but they, they both, they all worked good. But it does seem to be that the, the stronger the material, the thicker it is and the harder it is to wet out the cloth as we do this. And you can see this came in very strong at 465. Okay, I don't think it's real fair on the high strength epoxy for this test because where it broke uh, was where the original boat was, where it was non-laminated by the epoxy. And so just in the raw original boat, uh, just outside of the repair, that's where the actual uh, break was on this. And so I think that the epoxy and that laminate would have held even more. But generally it's a problem with the core anyway. Now this next test is another one that I had to run again. This one is all new materials. And so I've got my new foam. I've got um, vinyl ester on the top, two layers of vinyl ester and one layer of epoxy, high strength epoxy on the bottom. And the first time I did it with epoxy on the bottom, uh, I, I just laminated the bottom, uh, flipped it over and laminated the top. And it didn't hold as much because the bottom uh, delaminated. And so what it, what it led me to believe is you got to really make sure that that bonds really well to the bottom. And so that made me think I want to really vacuum bag it uh, when I'm actually doing the overhead stuff. And so what I did on this one uh, that I got 470 pounds out of, uh, I, I just laminated it in two sessions. Uh, I laminated it good on the bottom, wait for it to dry, and then I flipped it over and laminated it. Well, there's only one loser out of this whole bunch, and I saved that for the last test, and that's polyester. So one of the problems with polyester, uh, you'll notice that the strength was even fairly close, right? It was fairly close to the same numbers. You'll see that. But what happened is how that failed. And when it failed, it because it's so brittle, and then not only that, it didn't bind. It didn't bond very well to the existing glass. And so this is this is the only one out of all of them that where the repair is, that mechanical bond did not take. And um, that's what caused this one to break, as you can see clearly here. So is my test flawed? Uh, absolutely. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of flaws in this testing because it, num number one, the scale is, uh, my load cell is not real well calibrated. I calibrated it off of my weight. So uh, those numbers aren't real numbers. I think the only saving grace on that is I'm just comparing the numbers against uh, the the un undamaged piece that I'm testing and so I just want to see how what I'm doing compares against the undamaged piece and so the, you can't really judge it in pounds you have to really relate it back to uh, how it compares to the other piece when it broke. One of the other main problems of my test is I'm testing ultimate strength not yield strength and so I'm testing all the way until uh, it basically complete failure. Uh, what really is more practical is testing uh, yield strength, which, which is just you, you push it until it will no longer rebound back to its um, correct shape, and that's more its working load. I want to test ultimate strength because if there's a catastrophic damage like this again, I, I want to know where it's going to break and how it's going to break and that my repairs will be solid. This one is the high strength epoxy. Uh, and where it failed uh, in the repair, it failed at the original boat point. So right here, uh, it, it broke not even where the repair is. And so um, this was not a problem with the repair or even testing the strength of the epoxy. It tested the strength of the original boat. And so it uh, far surpassed that. This one here is the um, vinyl ester. And uh, the vinyl ester, uh, flexed very similar to the original boat. Uh, broke at a, a bit uh, more strength, but it's still flexible. And so that's important because you don't want to produce hard points in the boat where basically one section flexes and one, another section doesn't flex because it's stronger or because it's thicker. So when you have one stiff area and one flexible area, you're going to get this flex point in there and it's eventually going to break. That's where it's going to want to break. And so you avoid that by making sure that if you have a stronger or thicker area that you feather that back slowly so that it gradually tapers out uh, over a larger area and that'll prevent your hard points. And so in the areas that I do have it stronger or thicker, I'm sure to 
I'll make sure that I taper it out all the way. Uh, and so that's one other thing that that's helpful with that too. Polyester. And you think, oh, well, look, this one is hardly damaged. This one probably uh, is, um, it's good then. Well, no, what happened was it starts to delaminate and you can tell all the way through here, it's not even sticking. This is the only repair that I would say this repair failed. I would never consider using polyester to repair um, for my secondary bonding because it, it's going to break. Uh, not a failure of the um, of the laminate, but a failure of the bond. Um, with any of the other ones, my vinyl ester, no problem. My epoxy, either epoxy, no problem in the bond. For all my stuff, I want to to feel safe when I'm out there, and so. All my stuff, I've tested it, I've tore it apart, I've done peel tests on it. Uh, I'm making sure that everything is done solid and that it works because I just want to feel safe out there. So thanks for watching. Uh, it, we'll get back to the boat work next episode. Uh, you'll see all the, the cool stuff that I'm doing on the boat. Uh, if you found this useful, please like, please subscribe, um, and feel free to join me on Instagram, uh, on Patreon if you want to join the crew and help this be uh, a better channel. And also, don't forget my store. Pick up these shirts that I'm wearing, these dream shirts, at briansailing.com. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.